What's up guys, John here from Titan, and it's March. So it usually means March Madness, right? And that's basketball. So I wanna incorporate March Madness for Titan Medical Center. So we're gonna do the March Madness of IVs. This whole month, we're gonna be giving away IVs at a very, very discounted rate, 125 bucks for any of the IVs that we offer, excluding NAD. So any of the other ones that we offer, up to $275, you guys can get for 125 bucks. If you guys want better energy, you guys want to boost your immune system, you ladies or guys want something for your hair, skin, and nails, or a lot, lot more, we can help you out through our IV infusion. It's great. It's awesome for the body in a lot of different ways, and you're going to get a lot of benefits out of it. So if you guys are looking for energy, like I said, recovery, you want to build the immune system, or you just had a long night out and want to get that quick recovery, we can help you. Ladies, even if you guys are in that time of month and you want something for that cramping, we got something for you too. So if you guys want to get hooked up with our IV special here and March Madness of IVs, all you guys got to do is call or text 727-389-3220. Now guys, our IVs are a lot different than any of the IV places out there. You know, this is something that we take serious. So with every IV, you'll get a thousand milliliter bag. And some places only give you 500 milliliters. This is great for the hydration, it's recovery for you, right? You want these fluids going in. You want as much as possible. So we're not gonna chip you guys out or cheap you guys out. We wanna give you a thousand milliliters. The other thing is, is the dosage of the ingredients the vitamins, the amino acids, and the super antioxidants that are actually going in the bag. Now guys, you guys might not know, but I know what really goes in these bags in some of the places. You're not getting that much. Here at Titan Medical Center, we're gonna make sure the dosage is an optimal dose for you, giving you a lot better bang for your buck. So if you guys are looking for the best IV nutrition out there and therapy, you guys need to come to Titan Medical Center. And let's not forget, you actually get your own IV room. You get a beautiful chair that lays back. You can watch Netflix on here. You can make a phone call. We'll even give you a blanket if you guys want to lay down and take a nap. Okay, we're here for you guys, checking on you, making sure everything is good. But you don't have to sit next to somebody. You're not in an awkward room, right? You have your own privacy and your own location where you can get your IV infusion in peace. And that's what it's all about. So guys, don't delay. Call or text now, 727-389-3220 and tell them John from Titan City. Thanks, guys. Hey, guys. John from Titan here, and I'm back with our health tips to help you guys succeed at reaching your goals, whether it be weight loss, uh, putting on lean mass, or just overall feeling better. So two big questions I get all the time. One is, how often should I work out, John? All right, so the American Academy of College of Sports Medicine says that you should be working out at least 150 minutes per week, right? And this is to A, get all the health benefits, stay your same weight, and make sure you're staying on a healthy track to be inactive. If you're overweight or obese, they say 250 minutes, and this will help you rapidly decrease your weight to make sure that you're losing the weight to be healthier because being overweight and being obese is not healthy, okay? So don't let anybody sugarcoat that for you. Now with this, you can break down, let's say it's 150 minutes. You can break down through five days a week, seven days a week, just making sure you know it. Don't do it all in one day. Don't say, I'm just gonna go to the gym for all day and I hit 150 minutes of exercise. That's not gonna work. You wanna spread this out over time and be consistent. Now with this, you know, when working out, how often should you work out? Now for me, I would say at least, at least three to four days a week. Now doing 30 minutes to an hour, right? And that's kind of what I do right now. Now you can literally go five to six days a week. Now you should always give your body at least a day of rest. And I usually do that on Sundays, right? Or weekends, maybe Saturday and Sunday, and I work out all week. So I might work out five days a week at 30 minutes a pop. And at that point, I've covered that time period and what I really need to do. Now this is at moderate intensity. So this is not just you just walking or like, you just go, um, I did my, I did my 30 minutes, John. I, I should be good, right? No, that's not right. So moderate intensity. How do you know you're at moderate intensity? The way that you know you're at moderate intensity is if you're working out and you can literally say something to somebody so you can get on a phone call and you can kind of talk to them and you're not, ah, 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 
You shouldn't be like that. Then you might be overexerting yourself at your level because there's different levels of fitness. People are different. You know, there, there's going to be people that are more seasoned that can work out more strenuous, harder than you can for a longer period of time and not get out of breath. Right. And there's some people that, that, you know, they start and they're at moderate intensity and they they could be at that level too, because they haven't worked out for 10 or 15 or 20 years. You can't expect yourself to get right in the gym and be able to go 110 miles an hour. Like somebody that's been in the gym for 20 years doing this at least five days a week. It makes sense. Right? So you got to work your way into this. And the next question I get, how much should I be lifting, John? You know, what's a good start point for me? And I always tell them, listen, don't always focus in on reps, but you should focus in on it and have a goal. And usually I'll do three to four sets, okay, for 10 to 12 repetitions, right? So that means three sets or four sets if you want. Um, and you're doing at this repetition, you're going up, you know, at least 10 to 12. Now, how do you know the weight is um not enough weight or it's too much weight so if you're at your 10th rep right and it feels like you can't do it you might want to decrease the weight by a couple pounds just a couple and at that point you can continue on and hit the 12. now if you do decrease the weight and you say well i can hit 12 i can hit it easy you can increase your reps that's not a problem because that's building stamina and endurance for yourself and that's really a good thing now if you're reaching 12 and it's nothing right you're like you're just like i hit my 12. no you want to increase the weight a little bit not tremendously but a little bit and this is going to help your strength improve your endurance improve along with your stamina so you're going to be able to go longer and stronger okay so at that point make sure that you're exercising or getting plenty of activity through the week and you're spreading out those time periods you have those times look at your watch Look at the watch on the, or the clock on the wall, wherever you're working out or exercising at or activity wise, and make sure you are giving yourself enough weight to lift, okay? Whether it be free weights or you're on a machine or whatever you're doing. Another thing to do if you wanna increase strength, progressive load. So each week you start adding you know, a pound or two pounds more to that exercise you were doing before. This will increase your strength and you will start going up and up and up and up, okay? Now, when you hit to a certain point, you don't want to go crazy. So if you're at 400 pounds and you're like, oh, I'm going to go to 450, listen, you don't want to cause damage. You don't want to hurt yourself because if you do, then you're going to have to rest, relax, and you're going to start losing all that work you put in. All right, so these are just a couple of the questions that I want to answer for you guys. It's some health tips and tricks straight from Titan Medical Center. If you guys have any more questions or concerns, you want to become a patient, you want more help in this area, call or text us at 727-389-3220. Check out www.titanmedicalcenter.com too as well. I appreciate you guys tuning in and I'll be back with another segment for you guys helping out with health tips and tricks from Titan Medical Center. Thanks guys. What's up, guys? I'm John. I'm Cherise. And we're back with another Cupid's Corner. So every week we like to come to you guys with these tips and tricks or different things that possibly help your relationship now or your future relationship if you're not in one. So at that point, we always go over some great, great topics that are going to help you either way. And this week is no different. So we want to cover something that was really going to help people either find the right person that they're looking for or as a couple really align themselves better to what they want to do and for their future mm -hmm. so for this it's uh really knowing where you're going okay and why I, why i say that is is that know your goals so if you're single you've already probably been through past relationships mm -hmm. or past things that have hurt you or uh, you don't want to go through again or certain things that you're looking for in a partner because you didn't get them before or maybe you just are more attracted to these different traits. So at that point, you'll you'll automatically I think you know unconsciously. Yeah, some things you just don't want. You know you don't want. Right, you're 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 attracted to some people, right? Preferences and stuff like that. 
um, whether their looks or the way they talk or something like that, which gets you interested in this this person. <laughs> um, and at that point, you guys start diving into each other, okay? Whether it's first dates. Um, and mind you, some people, they have, when he said, you know, know where you're going, like some people have no idea where yeah, they're going. some people don't. You know, and I, mean, I guess you might be have to be okay with that. Yeah. You might be able to help direct traffic yeah. and, you know, help get them to where they're trying to go. Yeah. But, um, yeah. you know, some people don't want to put the work in. <laughs> some people don't. But, you know, at least know where you're going. And by, by the means of that, like, mm -hmm. you should, like I said, you're dealt with something before and you kind of know where you're going in that avenue of who you're looking for. All right. So when you're going to these different things, obviously you have some different goals for yourself of what you want to achieve in life, whether it's a career or it's children or uh you don't want children whatever it is uh, i mean at that point you know financially you want to get somewhere your house you want to get or whatever it is um and obviously nothing's perfect so <laughs> you gotta be willing to adapt through time um don't give up the things that you really want but you might have to adapt because you never know when those curveballs are coming it's always gonna happen you can sit there and plan out your fairy tale life right yeah. like oh my goodness you know we're all, both gonna have great jobs we're gonna have four children and they're gonna we're gonna have four dogs and a big white picket fence and the grass is always gonna be super green and oh, watered God. you know it it just doesn't work out that way all the time you know no. and it's not like I, I bet even the like most well-off person on this planet yeah. has been through a, a rough time for sure at some point for sure you know so you do have to adapt to the different changes or you know even when you're with somebody for this long like me and John we've been together forever People tend to change, okay? True. And you might need to adapt with the change, you know, because you might meet them and they might be one way. And let's just say, for instance, you guys meet <clears> each <throat> other and you guys are high school sweethearts, right? That's a good example because a lot of people change between, I think anyway, between the ages of like 18 and 30. Yep. You know, like just they change a lot uh, just based on, I don't know, just things in life, I guess. But I mean... Some people change and go this way, and some people change and go this way, right. you know? And some people will never meet back in the middle. No. So you just have to adapt to those kinds of changes. You gotta make sure that you guys are growing together. And we've talked about that before. Um, but the goals that you're kind of looking for, like I said, what you're expecting out of life and what you wanna get. Now, you know, some of these goals, you know, you talk to the person, if you, let's say you're single, you know, when do you bring this up? It's the first thing. Just not, probably not the first date. Not the first date. Right? First date should probably be like, and I haven't dated forever, obviously, but I go on dates with her, but <laughs> we already know this stuff about each other, so I'm not asking these questions. But it was, like, hey, by the you way. Know, you're getting to know somebody and probably, you know, going into, you know, like, should I go on a second date? Like, to so this person, you know, you'll, you'll know right off the bat. Like, it's pretty much instant connection to a degree on first dates uh, where it's either there or not. First dates, dates. Yeah, multiple dates. You can probably go on a couple. Multiple or a couple, I guess. Yeah. But I mean, there's got to be something that draws interest right, to right, go on right. a second date, right, right, right? For sure. Because if there's not, you're like, all right, if you're you're sitting there and it's Decline like decline when they call, and it's like an awkward and like silence, like you guys yeah, can't talk. Yeah, weird. Okay, like that. That's probably there's probably no interest there unless you're just that shy and the other person thinks it's that cute. <laughs> it, it really isn't. When you're sitting there, and it's just there's no silence. Like, listen, if you're the guy, try to lead the conversation. Talk about you know something. Find some sort of interest, common interest, and then talk about it. And that's usually what happens, or it just naturally comes. Like, you guys could be, like, just people watching, like, oh, my God, I moved the waitress and said that and start laughing about it, and that drives another conversation. You can always treat it just like if you were in a job interview and yeah. you ask them, so tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I mean, I guess. And usually that does open up, like, okay, tell me what you like to do, you yeah. know, and things like that. But, you know, as John brought up in the beginning, yeah. you know, in that time frame, in those first few dates, you guys should be able to al like align goals, you know, like you guys kind of have some sort of similar goals or at least and know what that person's You guys going to have are. some sort of similar interests, right? And then the interests are like things that you guys like to do or you, you guys you have some common goal or interest into doing. Like some people like to go to festivals. Some people like to go work out together. Some, I mean, it's just a million different one things that people have out there, movies, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And that draws co common interest together, bring you guys to a, a middle point, a middle ground. You guys are like, oh, man, I want to find out more about this person. And that's really where the details really come into play. Like, you know, do you want children? You know, And this is some very serious conversations. 
And these things can change over time too. True. Right? That's very true. So don't automatically knock somebody out. But if somebody says, listen, I, I, I absolutely do not want to do this. Like, I'm totally against it. Or maybe it's religion barriers or whatever it is. It's going to be an uphill I mean, battle. Think about it though. You, you know, just to throw this out there. I, mean, I want to say it's a small percentage. But, I mean, even on like shows that we watch 90 day fiance we yep. love that show by the way um but on even on that show some people and i think i ran into somebody recently they never wanted kids like yep. never ever wanted kids yep. i don't want kids i met you i told you i didn't want kids yep. we went through years of dating i yep. told you i didn't want kids yep. and the other person stayed hopeful for x period of time yep. and then at some point they might have met them at that halfway point where hey you know what I'll, I think we can have a kid. Right. You know, it's just, times change. I've had friends, literally. Uh, my, Small percentage. I have one of my good friends, Tony Cannon, right? He's like, I'm never having kids ah. ever. Never <laughs> having kids ever. Never having kids ever. Oh, yeah. Uh, he married an awesome Muslim girl, doctor, the whole nine, and he has two kids now. Girls, right? He's really happy. The two girls? Yeah. <laughs> so I think he's got a girl and a son. So he's got both. Um, but he's real happy. But that's just that's just a, you know an example. Right. Just things can't change over time once you get in a relationship. And you know, love does certain things, and certain things you adapt to, and certain things you'll bend to, and certain things, things people won't. won't. Yeah. So you got to know where those certain things are absolutely out. And at that point, if that's going to go against what you want, you know, that's that's where you're gonna have to make up the decision for yourself. Should I stay in this relationship or should I not? Because you might have a lot of time invested. Yes. That's the time. That's the time you cannot get back. But uh, you should be able to find out this information yeah. honestly, probably within the first month. I would say at least three months. You know, like in those three months, because That'd be a month, right? I mean, dating wise, just depends. Well, I mean, depends no, how many dates. Not everybody's talking. like me and John. We um, moved in two not, weeks after being I'm with each not other. Saying that's, that. that's that's that's. I serious. don't put anybody Let's in our serious. category. Because if anybody's Seriously. in our category, like one of my friends coached me, told me what was going on, I'm like, man, you better <laughs> slow crazy. it the hell down, right? You got a lot of shit, whatever. I come you over and be stuff. like, um, yeah, so uh, which drawer is mine now? Yeah. I, need, I got stuff. Yeah, watch out for that. I got some stuff. Red flags. <laughs> There's a lot of red flags. <laughs> but Because um, you don't want that either. Some guys don't want that. So that's a yeah, major turnoff true. for some guys. And like yeah. guys are like, it's that might much. push them away. So yeah. girls, take note. Like, it's you true. don't push it on the guy. And now... You know, after a certain amount of time, like, it's expected, right? And, and, you know, you guys should be progressing in the relationship. So, if it's not progressing, then there's a problem there, too. Are you talking about, like, getting a ring? I'm not talking about just getting the ring, but I'm talking about progression. So, like, you know, if people date for, and there's, I'm not going to put a time period on it. But Don't people, put time. People date in stages. And if that stage is progressing. Like, you know, you guys are past the dating stage. You guys are now a couple. Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys have been a couple for a long time. You guys are spending all this time. You guys are aligning yourselves, your friends, your goals, your hobbies. Then, you know, it's it's on. You know, at that point, you know, possibly moving in with each other or, or marriage, you know, before moving. It depends on religion or the way that you think. But you really never know somebody until you move in with them. So true. You don't know anybody until you live with them. You know, that's a true statement. You, you know, you really do. It, it's not a weekend vacation. I'm talking <laughs> about you know you living with them. Yeah. So you know everything. It's not like one night. It's multiple nights. You know where they throw their clothes. Yeah. You know that they put their toothbrush on the uh, yeah. on the sink counter instead of putting in the little in the little bucket. Or even in the shower. Uh, you know, you I leave know. mine in the shower, but I have I have a new I have a new toothbrush every day. <laughs> You this know, is like, true. He's like, you left your toothbrush in the shower. True. I'm like, yeah, I know. I brushed my teeth in there, and I got a brand new one. Thanks. So, you know, <laughs> there's different things that you learn about somebody, and then there's, there's certain things that might turn you off about that, and just some yeah. things you're just not good with. Yeah. And this will definitely thing, and you guys can talk about it. Yeah, sometimes, key. sometimes you can fix it. Yeah. Like, you can change it. I, I mean, obviously, if there's an issue, obviously, you want to bring it up to the partner. If you're going to go further relationship, mm -hmm. there's things that you just cannot go, you know, go with. Then at that point, you know, you have to cut your losses, your too. Losses. And that happens a lot in business and life, um, mm -hmm. you know, and in love. You might have to cut your losses because it might be detrimental to you. It might be toxic to you. You never know that. And it just might be holding you back in a lot of ways, shapes, and forms. Um, but at that point, like I said, talk it out. If you really think that the relationship is worthwhile and you really want to be with that person, obviously mm -hmm. communication is key. Communication. That's the first part. <laughs> and then they're going to let you know right away. They're going to tell you, yes, yes, yes. And then actions after what are going to back up. Actions, I, d I definitely actions. think in the first, like, I would say the first few dates, I think, like, the big things should come out, like, you know, whether or not you want kids. Um, another one it would be because I know me personally, when I met somebody, if you had kids, we nice. weren't going forward. I just didn't do baggage. Nice. Sorry. Um, that's just me personally. Um, but kids aren't bags. <laughs> I mean, if they weren't my kids, <laughs> they were I'm bags. Joking. I'm kidding. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to say? I'm being 
honest. You guys know I'm brutally honest, okay. so don't don't judge okay. me for it. Okay. So anyways, but some things are deal breakers, you know? So you got to come up with those deal breakers and you got to know those, I think, in the first 30 days. Yeah, like, I, these are deal breakers. Like, you know, if it's a religion thing, you might have to, let's say you might have to get married a certain way in a certain place and it has to be, maybe it's something you just don't agree with and yeah. something you won't bend for. Like These are different things that will change. And then usually if something like that happens, then the families get involved after that and then that's a whole different yeah. ball game. That's ugly. So it's yeah. just it's certain things that you want to just take in consideration now. If you don't care about all the other, you know, the issues or stuff like that, because once you go forward with these things, and let's say there is some some friction in some of these different areas, like family, religion, or whatever it is, or, or mm. things that you're dealing with that partner, you better be ready to, to fight the uphill battle or be, you know, in it to win it, mm -hmm. and not just like, all right, well, I'm just going to give up because you might as well just stop right there yeah, and just, just end the time. relationship and go on and move on because it's not worth your trouble, it's not worth the stress. It's not worth that, their stress or, or time either. So at least just be fair on that that, that aspect. I agree. Because uh, at that point, it's gonna it's gonna hurt your feelings, his feelings, or and maybe even versa. cause some barriers within family. You know, between True. the mom and the dad, or True. you know, you become a barrier in between them, and then you know what happens after that? True. Resentment. Now listen, you don't have to get along with your in laws. It happens a lot where you don't get along with your in laws, yeah. but you at least go along you with have to things be amicable amicable because <laughs> your partner and you love your partner right it's not being disrespectful to anybody it's right. support for your partner support for their family you know if you have kids involved you don't want you know you don't want your kids uh, on the outside per se you want mm -hmm. them involved with the family too as well so you know it's just certain things that you eat up and you adapt to over time and uh, that will make you the best that you possibly can and the best for your relationship that you can possibly do so these are just some of the different things. Now, financial planning is a whole different ball game. You guys are gonna wanna look at that aspect too, the order that you get. Don't just think about tomorrow. Think about, listen, down the road, especially if you do have kids or you guys have goals, you guys wanna have some financial goals together of what you guys wanna accomplish together, whether it's, you know, if you're wanting to get your own house or you wanna be able to retire at a certain age um, or certain different things. And you guys gotta be in that together and you guys gotta be on the same page. And, and like you guys are both working to a common goal. The mission's the exact same. You guys are on the same page working toward the exact same things. And this goes for everything you do in your relationship. 100%. I mean, don't forget that there is online banking apps now, so you can always ask him to just pull that up and just make sure it's all going to work out. Ooh. <laughs> I heard the credit score is your Ooh, thing now. Oh, yeah. Pull up the FICO. Pull up the, pull up the FICO score. <laughs> Let me I'm see like, your experience. I want to see experience. <laughs> I want to see TransUnion. Like, hold on one second, sir. I, I, I just I want to make sure we're all on the same page here. Equifax. So just... You better pull it all out. Like, here's my credit board now. Let, let me. Yeah, see, listen, now that's another thing, right? Because it's pretty serious. Like, yeah, it is. You know, when you go into it and you meet somebody, you don't think about, and I, I would. You really don't. And a lot of people don't. There are girls out there or guys out there that look for this. Ask but they say, answer. listen, what's your credit score? I was kidding. You know, you know uh, how's your credit score? How, how are you doing? Like, that's something you don't think about. But once you get into that relationship and now you have all this festive time, and let's say you get engaged and get married, now you're bringing everything together. Mm -hmm. So at that point, you know, you're bringing other things into the marriage or the relationship, not kids. Like, wait a minute, I didn't sign up but to buy your car. Financial baggage. I didn't sign up. I, wait, I didn't sign up to have the house, and I'm gonna buy the whole house. I thought we we wanted a house together, right? You know, and then you're thinking one thing, and one thing is another, and these are pretty like personal things. You really just you don't ask somebody what is your credit, you know, your credit score. You just don't say that. There, there's but, some people out there do. Well, or them, or the thing is, is looking the person up afterwards because now you can pay to do that very inexpensively. It's actually about three ninety nine, I think. And you know what? Dollars, Listen, it's a good thing to a certain yeah. degree. I don't like it, but it's a, it's like a good it. thing, a bad <laughs> thing, because it could tell you a lot of information about that person. Um, it is breaking some some different trust, I think, with that person too, like going behind their back and doing something like this. But I do know people that do this, and they look up per people, you know, before they get dating them seriously like they meet them on the first date or two and then at that point they run this background check on somebody <laughs> <laughs> and they get all the information oh my God. and then they wait because it's brewing in their mind they want to bring it up to that person because they know already <laughs> so they're just waiting for that person to bring it out and they might lead them with some questions at, at that point like they really know so you know yeah. you never know who's looked you up either on google or anything else so these are just some of the different tips and tricks <laughs> that we want to help you guys out with this week. Join us every Sunday, 11 a.m. on ABC. And if you miss the show, don't worry. We're on YouTube with our full shows. Just look up Titan Medical Center and our social media platforms. 
Instagram and Facebook. You can check out those shows as well. All right, guys. I'm John. I'm Sharice. And we're out of here. We'll see you next Sunday with another Cupid's Corner. See you then.